Good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning. I'm glad that you're here on this cold, wintry, blustery day. Who knew that we would get the shock in November of snow and cold, and yet it's warm in here for sure. Just want to highlight a few announcements for you uh, to just to take note of. One is a women's ministries event that's happening tomorrow night at 119 Costigan Road. It's called an others party. Wow, others. It's really product that you can purchase uh, that's fair trade and made by people uh, who are in the Salvation Army and other parts of the world. Wonderful items, and if I had remembered, I could have brought you a couple of samples of things that I've purchased. Really great if you're thinking about Christmas gifts, ladies, or um, something that's unique and um, an opportunity to help others in need as well as they look to utilize their skill sets in other countries to make items that we can purchase. Very nice items, I would uh, say, and also embroidered and things like that. So come and join and see. You won't be able to take your products home, but you'll be able to order them, and they will arrive prior to Christmas. If you do want to just sort of check that out, you can go um, into Google and type in Others uh, Salvation Army, and I think it's tradeforhope.ca will allow you just to kind of see some of the items that you might be able to purchase. Not all are available through our Canada site. The other thing I'd like to highlight is uh, Kettle Sign Up at the back. There's a few dates that our core is responsible for. However, those do not have to stop there. If you would like to volunteer, and uh, ring those bells this Christmas is an opportunity. It's a great teaching opportunity for young people. It's also a great opportunity to share God's love in a unique way this Christmas and uh, provide some uh, comfort to those and the needs that are in our community. I have utilized my guitar um, and, and brought a friend along who uh, has sung with me for a, a couple of times, and that works really well to allow three hours to go by really fast. Uh, the other thing is on November 25th, there is emergency disaster services training, so just check that out. Another thing is that um, Sarah Rowe and Jessica Beveridge are hosting a bit of a fundraiser and they're at their work, and if you had some extra items that could be used for their door prizes, they would really appreciate it. So just check that out with them and they can give you the details. And lastly, sorry, there's a lot today. Um, next Sunday, November 12th, Murdy and Carol Hutton and family and friends will be having a memorial service for their son Chad at Riverhurst Community Church. It is um, at 3 p.m. and all are welcome. And so for some of us, we would know Murdy and Carol well as they served as site managers for many years at Beaver Creek Camp. So just wanted to let you know of that and know that there is a drive and we recognize that. But um, just so you're aware, we'll uh, make that opportunity again. So it's next Sunday, November 12th, 3 p.m. Riverhurst Community Church. And we'll have a call to worship. Good morning. Do you want to do the call to worship? Seeing as you made it, Dusty rushed to get all the kids home, and so I was going to cover for him, but he, I see he's here, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Am I going to lead the song too? I had this open to the right. Maybe we should have just rolled with you. Um, this morning, our theme very much is going to be centered around uh, a text that deals with some social justice in Nehemiah. We talked a little bit this morning in Sunday school as well, where justice meets human beings and God. And a text from Amos, I found it, I found something. We come on Sunday morning and we worship the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. We also have a different aspect to worship. The Shema tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then Jesus adds on, and we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. So how do we come into a place of worship is something that Amos challenges us on. He goes on to tell us that when we come to church and we worship, but we don't love our neighbors, that we are just simply wasting God's time. And in Amos 5.24, it says, But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, like a flood that consumes 
a whole countryside is how we are to treat our neighbors. That justice that only God exemplifies to us, being righteous, being right with our neighbors, needs to be present in our lives when we come to worship a righteous God. So, let us worship our righteous Lord and let us keep in our hearts how we treat our neighbors. Please stand. This morning's opening song is a, a call to arms. Valiant soldier marching to the fray. Keep in step all the time. Do not lag or falter by the way, but keep in step all the time. Let's sing together. excuse for me to come up? Okay. I was waiting for it up there on the thing. Prayer focus time. Today we are asked to pray for the Salvation Army national and local efforts to provide barrier-free environments, including building design, user-friendly technology, and fair employment opportunity, along with physical, mental, spiritual, and monetary recovery for families deeply affected by the wildfires in southwestern Saskatchewan and 
for our own core family members, Billy Rowe, Andrew and Jill Regame, along with Nolan and Raya Regame. God, we pray today, we want you to lift up in prayer the national and local efforts uh, to lift away all barriers, big or small, not only in the technology, but also in the fair employment opportunities, Lord. I pray that you give those in charge of making this possible for the foresight they need to make this project go through, Lord. Uh, we also, Lord, we ask you to watch over the families that have been impacted by the destruction of, our wa of the wildfires in southwestern Saskatchewan, Lord, and per in, in our province, Lord, and keep those who have been affected safe and give them peace that all they know, need to know, Lord, is you. And also, at this time, Lord, we pray for those who are there fighting the fires and those who, who uh, have to deal with that stress of losing homes and all that other stuff, Lord. Uh, and we also want to lift up in prayer, Lord, Billy Rowe um, and uh, the Regame family, uh, we just want to pray that Billy knows you, Lord, and just uh, you know what's in his heart. And if he has any issues going on, that you just guide him, Lord, uh, and keep him safe and just uh, keep him on the right path towards you, Lord. And we just want to lift up the Regame family that uh, you use uh, Andrew and Jill, Lord, to teach their young ones about you, Lord. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. A story I heard recently was from the 1400s. A bishop was dealing with a businessman and uh, bringing him towards faith and wanted to baptize him. And the businessman said, I have to go to Rome. And uh, I've got some business with the Vatican and, and I'm staying with the Pope's family, so my plan is to stay, to stay there. And the bishop said, you know, it's really polluted down there. The air is not good. It's unhealthy. There's some really bad stuff going down in Rome. He said, no. He said, I've got to go do this business. So uh, the guy went away for a couple months, and the bishop was very concerned when he came back that there would be no baptism, that this person would not be baptized under Christ's name. However, the, the fellow came back, and, uh, and he said, he said, I'm sure probably now you don't want to be baptized after all the pollution that you dealt with in Rome. And the guy said, absolutely the opposite. He said, I don't know much about religion, but I know a lot about business. And the way they run their business, they should not survive for longer than 14 days, let alone 1,400 years. It's a miracle. i got to be baptized. So... Uh, your offering today is going to the church that Christ created. And uh, so it's a universal entity. It will be here until the end of time. And so what you're doing is actually offering God uh, your, uh, your money uh, to continue on the work of the church. And we, all, we don't do it always right, and we don't do it always well, but boy, he's called us to give so that we can continue our mission. And so that's what you're giving to today uh, for the continuance of the church. So while the ushers come forward, we're going to pray and ask God to bless us. Lord God, you are a miraculous God, and we thank you that you have sustained the church for so many years, and that as a community that we can come and worship. And now help us to worship with our tithes and offerings. In Christ's name I ask this. Amen.
Jordan. I bet you stand with me. I'm not a stranger to mercy, for you found me, wrapped your truth around me. Now I'm not a stranger to grace, now I've seen it in your face. Now I'm not a stranger to kindness, we're the broken, with your life inside us. You have brought your gospel to me, and I breathe it every day. How did I become your miracle? Now to take your truth and tell the world. Now I'm going to take it to the streets. Now I'm going to sing it till we meet. And heaven is open. Come on over your three joys. this mercy for you found me and wrapped your truth around me and I must tell the world of this grace and I've seen it in your face and I must tell the world of this kindness for the broken with your life inside us you have brought your gospel to me help me live it every day how did I the dead heart from its sleep and heaven is open and now's the time to raise our shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King. The fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Your name, your name is victory. Now praise will rise to Christ. 
of defeat the resurrecting king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrecting king is resurrecting me By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrecting king is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrecting king is resurrecting me. Is resurrecting me. Where soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Now God has robbed the grave Now God has robbed the grave Your name is victory. Now praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. Now praise will rise to Christ our songs be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your love we are here for you and we are here for you You are to open, nothing new is hidden. You are a one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let us shout, be your anthem, your renown. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. You are to rope nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, we welcome you with
welcomed in this place. You are to rope and nothing here is hidden. You are a one desire. Jewel Lord, our holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Lord God, we call on you this morning to meet us here in your sanctuary. Lord God, to speak to our hearts and to our minds, to nourish and renew our spirits and our convictions and calls that you have placed in our lives. And Lord God, may we be in this place to know you, to love you, to worship and to joy. We praise you, Jesus, because you are an awesome God. Amen. Okay, we're going to try something very, very special today. You have to be very strong. I'm going to show you something. I have 25 cents. And I'm going to, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to Eve. If you can get it out of her hand, you can have it. Okay? Here you go, Eve. Okay, who wants to try first? Hello? Okay, let, let Chloe try first. Can you get it out? You can. Maybe Jackson, do you think you can get it out? Oh, let, let Jackson try now. Do you think you can try? Oh, I don't think you, I bet. Oh, Logan wants to try. Oh, you're big and strong. I wonder if her dad can get it out of her hand. Let her dad come and try. Maybe we need somebody really big, yeah. See if he can get it out. Because Eve wants to keep this. She doesn't want anybody to get it. Nope, he can't do it, and he knows it. You know what? Eve is going to tell us something. Do you have your paper? She is going to read us something that says in the Bible. What, what do we do with the paper? The Bible, yes. Yes, here it is. It's from Isaiah 49. I'll never leave you. Never. Look, I have written your name on my palms and on my hands. So God has said he loves us so much that he has our names written on our, his hands. So when he closes his hand, we're there, right? And nobody can get it out. Because God will be with us forever. And nobody can get our name off of his hand. So you know what we decided to do? What did the bag say? Courtney, do you have it? <laughs> we decide. Oh, there they are. Pick them up. Everybody gets a piece of wood with God's name on it. And I want you to keep God in your hand. And nobody can ever take God away from you if you... As soon as we gather these up, we're gonna everybody's gonna get one. <laughs> Does she have one in her mouth? Oh good, okay. We don't want God in our mouth, we just wanna keep him in our hand. <laughs> oh, I think that will be plenty. Can you Courtney, can you help Leah make sure everybody gets one? Okay. Pass the bag around. Everybody take go, uh, 
take a piece of wood that has God on it, and I want you to hold it tight in your hand because nobody can. That says God. Yep, that says God too. All of them say God, and we're going to hold it tight in our hand like this. Yes, you can put God in your hand too. Where's the bag? Okay. We need we need some more gods over here. Jenny, did you get God? You want to put him in your hand? Hold him really tight in your hand. Everybody hold very, very tight. Max, here you go. You got one? You got one, Logan? Here you go, Alice. Hold it very tight in your hand. And you know what? When you're holding your hand tight with God in it, you can't even open it up, can you? So we're going to pray now. And I'm going to hand the mic around to all of you. And I want you to say your names, okay? Everybody close your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for having Jackson. Courtney. Bo. Jacob. Brianna. Beth. Clara. Ginny. Nash. Anna. Allie. Logan. you dear Jesus for having each one of these precious children's names written on your hand thank you for holding on to them tight and I pray that as they grow they will learn to cling to you as well thank you so much for their young lives and for the love you have for them amen I don't, I don't know if you all plan it that you leave the front row bare for me to put all my notes and papers, but if you do, thank you. <laughs> Your foresight is very appreciated. Although if you would choose to sit up here, I'll try not to embarrass you too much. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning is from Nehemiah chapter 5, and we're going to read uh, straight through all 19 verses. That's Nehemiah chapter 5. Now there was a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish kin. For there were those who said, with our sons and our daughters, we are many. We must get grain so that we may eat and stay alive. There were also those who said, we are having to pledge our fields, our vineyards and our houses in order to get grain during the famine. And there were those who said, we are having to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay the king's taxes. Now our flesh is the same as that of our kindred. Our children are the same as their children. And yet we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been ravished. We are powerless and our fields and vineyards now belong to others. I was very angry when I heard their outcry and these complaints. After thinking it over, I brought charges against the nobles and the officials, and I said to them, you are all taking interest from your own people. And I called a great assembly to deal with them and said to them, as far as we are able, we have bought back our Jewish kindred who had been sold to other nations, but now you are selling your own kin, who must then be brought back to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say, and so I said, the thing that you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations of our enemies? 
Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us stop taking of interest. Restore to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the interest on money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been extracting from them. Then they said, We will restore everything and demand nothing more from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests, and I made them take an oath to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out everyone from house and from property who does not perform this promise. Thus may they be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen. And they praised the Lord, and the people did as they promised. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the 20th year to the 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people, and they took food and wine from them. Besides 40 shekels of silver, even their servants lorded it over the people. But I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I devoted myself to work on the wall and acquired no land. And all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 people, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from nations around us. Now that which was prepared for one day was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared from, for me, and every ten days skins of wine in abundance. Yet with all this, I did not demand the food allowance of the governor because of the heavy burden of labor on the people. Remember for my good, O oh my God, all that I have done for this people. The Salvation Army has existed for many, many years with a core value of salvationism being the conviction to address injustice because God has called us to it. I want to read for you a story uh, from the history book of the Salvation Army about this William Booth and the Match Factory. Some of you may be familiar with the story, but for those that are new, I just want to share it with you today. A subsidiary enterprise of the Darkest England scheme reflected Booth's innovative and unconventional approach to solving social ills. He ordered the investigation of a large match factory, which produced evidence not only of appalling working conditions and low pay, but also of dozens of cases of phosphorus necrosis, or what was then called Fossey Jaw. It was a painful and often fatal disease attacking the teeth and the jawbone, causing the jaw to rot with horrible disfigurement and suffering. The big match firms were aware of these evils, but callously they refused to take steps to remedy them in their factories. On May 11, 1891, General Booth opened a factory to produce matches where the dangerous yellow phosphorus was not used. It employed 100 women and used only safe phosphorus. And it also paid an adequate living wage. The darkest England matchboxes soon were a welcome and familiar sight throughout England and are today represented as museum pieces. England's biggest match factory, Bryant and May, was moved to adopt the safety match and introduce factory reforms. By 1900, 
The large factories had been influenced to change their methods, and the darkest England factory was then closed. Parliament then passed a law in 1908 restricting the unsafe use of phosphorus, which had formerly been used. Booth had described his darkest England scheme as better to build a fence at the top of a precipice than to attempt to rescue a man once he had fallen off. As time went on, his scheme and many offshoots pushed the fence of his parable father or his, of his parable farther and farther back from the edge of the precipice. Now I tell this story to you because I think it's an example of how we salvationists called by God from the days of 1891 to 2017 are called to make right what we see and know is wrong in our world. And William Booth set that example for us, just as Nehemiah sets that example for us in the passage that we studied today. And you might be saying, but it's different. We don't use dangerous chemicals in manufacturing companies anymore. And most people get at least minimum wage, right? However, ethics in business today are equally as important as they were in 1891. And there are as many changes needed to care for people as there were then. I want to tell you a story about a modern-day man, someone I actually know, who was working a job that they were miserable in, and one day was offered the opportunity to join a new and upcoming business, to set a foundation and build this company with this secular man. The individual decided that this was a great opportunity for him and for his family. So he set to work with this man, and they built a company. They were selling equipment and servicing equipment. The man's boss at Christmas time was offering kickbacks to the individuals who got to make decisions about which quote they would accept, and asked this young man if he would take alcohol and offer it to these people as gifts to entice them to take their quote so that their business, business could be built and could grow. The young man was a salvationist. The young man felt very deeply that he could not offer someone else whiskey or rye or rum, whatever the case of liquor it was, to his clients and to those people that he was trying to get to buy his product. He said, I need to do business my way. I need to do it fair so that my price is my price because they're going to get the best product and the best service after, not because I gifted them a bottle of alcohol. This man's conviction set an example for that secular man, and that business grew rapidly, and in the course of about four years, from nothing, went to a multi-million dollar company that no longer offered kickbacks but offered the best product for the price that they could get it at with a great service team afterwards who was willing to be there and to support. That man became an officer and works hard now <laughs> to battle injustice every day as an officer. We, as salvationists, Salvationists, look at that, I can't even get the word out, are called to bring justice to that which is unjust. Nehemiah hears the outcry from all of those who are being exploited for their labor, for their land, with catastrophic interest 
just to have green to live. He's moved with a righteous anger. Now, what is a righteous anger? It's when we're angry and that anger moves us to conviction for action, to make right what is wrong. Right? To make right what is wrong. And so, out of his righteous anger, Nehemiah thinks it over and sets to work. He calls the nobles and the officials who are those who are in trouble, right? He calls them all together and he says, what you're doing is wrong. And he calls not only the officials afterwards, but then the assembly, so that in the presence of others, these people can be called to do what is right. And he tells them how. They can do it. He makes them agree to stop oppressing their very own people. Has your neighbor ever owed you a debt? And you stuck it to him? What about a family member? Have you ever stuck it to a family member that owed you That doesn't sound like the right thing to do, does it? But that's what the children of Israel were doing. They were getting all that they could get because they had and there were those that didn't. After Nehemiah calls them out and asks them to do what is right and they say, yes, we're going to do what is right, He doesn't just leave it there. He calls the priests in then and has everyone make an oath that before God they will do what is right and make right on what they have done. And then he does this whole shakes out his cloak. So typically in the hem of the cloak they would have carried bits and things and whatever they had, and they would keep it safe in their cloak, kind of like our pockets, which I only have one in my tunic, and it's useless. <laughs> but if I was going to do it today, it, it's this. I'm shaking out my pockets, pulling out the edges, so that there's nothing there. He says, if you break this oath, the kingdom of heaven will be the pocket, and it, you will be shook out of it. <laughs> right? This is the imagery that he has laid before the oppressors. You don't want to lose your chance to be with God. So do what is right for the people. And then Nehemiah goes on to share a little bit about his experience as a high official. He was the governor for 12 years. And in 12 years, he never once took the food allowance that he was entitled to. Why? Because he knew that the people were already pressed. That the king's taxes and food security were already a heavy burden on them. And that he didn't want to be the one to add another burden. So out of his own funds, he ate. And he fed 150 people at his table on a daily basis. Because that's what was right. Because that's the example that he wanted to set as governor, was that he was one of them, and he too worked at the wall, as did his 150 kinsmen sat at his table. They worked to build the wall together. They experienced similar pressures. But because of his position, he didn't take advantage.
I'm going to ask some rhetorical questions that I, ju I don't want anybody to raise their hand. These are just for you, okay? Just for you. Okay. Do you live comfortably? Do you feel blessed? Do you have food in your cupboard or your fridge consistently? Are you in need? Or do you live in abundance? Is it difficult to pay taxes or bills? Or with the work that you do, is it manageable? Do you ever feel a need to stick it to your neighbor or to gain from their lot or loss? The concept of inflation is a crooked <laughs> concept, right? When there's a high demand, we raise the price, right? So when it's things like food and basic housing, inflation is wrong. Because if there's a need, it should be provided at a fair price that's equitable for all and achievable for all with dignity. This is the kind of justice that we need to fight for. And if we live in abundance, we shouldn't desire to live in greater abundance. We should desire, like Nehemiah, to help others achieve their basic needs. The widows, the orphans. Scripture talks a great deal about social justice. It talks about speaking out and using our voice to bring about change and influence others, like William Booth did with the match factory. He saw people suffering with disease, with poor working conditions, not making enough money to live, and he said, our world can do better, and it can do better for these people. And he showed them how. Built a match company. Where does that come from in the Salvation Army, right? We're the largest non-governmental social service agency in the country. A match factory? But he set an example. He set the tone. He proved that it could be done and could be profitable still for the owners and managers to make a living. And it was right to give people a living wage, to make sure that their job wasn't the cause of their death, and a sufferable one at that. We are called by this text, by the history of the Salvation Army, and by God to speak out against injustice. And like those people, to live out against injustice. We are called to share our abundance, to lobby the government if we need to, to buy a business and build it on proper ethical and moral principles so that everyone has the opportunity to work with dignity. The Salvation Army is still active in these endeavors. The Others Project is exactly what this was. 
developed in Bangladesh initially so that women who came from street trade could have a job that was dignified and honorable, that they could support themselves and have a livelihood in a very meaningful way. And the products that they make with their very own hands can then be purchased by others and shared as gifts or treasures. That's a social justice change for those women. And it really is often one person at a time that we can address social injustice. The Salvation Army has other things like gifts of hope. You'll probably hear a lot about that in the Christmas season. The opportunity where we who may live in abundance can purchase practical needs for people overseas. Mosquito nets where malaria is an issue. Water sources where clean water is an issue. Food supply for schools, orphanages, children's and women's and men's trade programs. There are so many opportunities for us as salvationists to continue to be active in our world. Locally, we have Mumford House, who can tell me what December 2nd is? Pardon? Say it louder. It's the Santa Shuffle. The money that's raised at the Salvation Army Santa Shuffle in partnership with the running room goes to support Mumford House. Do you all know what Mumford House is? Everyone says yes? Or do we have any no's? Raise your hand if you don't know what Mumford House is. Okay, we, we have a hand. So Mumford House... And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Leanne, because this is her area and her focus. But Mumford House is a home for women and their children who are either found themselves homeless or at risk of homelessness. It's a place for them to have safety and support so that they can get back on their feet and be supported to help find sustainable housing. Am I right? Okay, good. I got that one. Right. What a great opportunity for us as salvationists, to lobby behind and support them. Mumford House doesn't have any government funding, do they? A little bit? But they need our support. So here's my Nehemiah pipe, and this is not to be braggery, but the Sodders have signed up for the Santa Shuffle, and if you're able, you should sign up too. There's a five-kilometer run, should you be so inclined. I am not, so I will be participating in the one-and-a-half-kilometer elf walk. Because <laughs> I think if I tried to run five kilometers, I would die. Um, and then I would be no good to anyone. But if you can't, support someone in the core who is. Make a donation. You can go online and support anyone who is walking. This is a way that today we can be social agents justice. Christmas is coming. The Salvation Army is present in the community in a very large way. We will see likely around 4,000 applications of individuals and families that can't afford to do Christmas. That's a big number. 4,000 applications. How can we support those people? And then the bigger question is, how do we work ourselves out of a job in that area so that these people have the opportunity for affordable housing to be able to provide the needs for their family at any season? It's a tall task. And I'm not going to paint it as, let's just... <laughs> One, two, three, four, bippity boppity boo, right? Like, I'm not a fairy godmother. I can't do that. But I do believe that change is possible. And I do believe that God has called us to make those changes. I'm inspired and convicted 
when I read Nehemiah chapter 5. That there is a community in need crying out for us to respond. Will we? Will we speak out? Call people on their bad actions? And will we live out? Set the example so that others will be drawn to that example. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful that you are a God of conviction and of calling. That you are a God of inspiration. That you give us creativity. You give us compassion and mercy and love in our hearts so that when we hear people cry out, we have a longing and a desire, Lord God, to respond, to help. Lord God, we ask that you would just push the enemy away, shake him out of the hem of our clothing, that he would not be near us. He would not make us complacent, but Lord God, that we would find strength and hope in your love to share and care for others in need. Lord God, revive in us a spirit of salvationism like the example of Nehemiah, of William Booth, and others who have stepped up to make right what is wrong, who have been convicted by righteous anger to do something about it. Lord Jesus, reveal to us today what we need to do for you in your kingdom, we pray. Amen. songs are sung and our prayers for kingdom come did we bring honor to the words we sing does our worship have power does it have does it stand up in the face of injustice? Does the worship bow down? Does it run deep? Is it more than a song that fades with our voices? Does it fade with our voices?
stand up in the face of injustice? Does the worship bow down? Does it run deep? Is it more than a soul that fades with our voices? Does the worship have hands? Does it have feet? Does the worship bow down? Does it run deep? Is it more than a song that fades with our voices? I invite you to stand with me and sing that one more time. Does the worship bow down? Does it have feet? Does it stand up in the face of injustice? Does the worship bow down? Does it run deep? Is it more than a song that fades with our voices? Does it fade with our voices? Heavenly Father, give us the strength to have our hands and feet match what our mouths sing. May we reach out into a world to our neighbors and love them. And may we be given the strength to make real change in this world, change that only the kingdom of God can truly make. Give us that strength. As we pray and praise you and sing from our hearts, as we make you the object of our worship. May we also love our neighbors. A lovely rhetorical question our song here this, this, this morning has asked us. Do we have hands and feet? Can we stand up to injustice? Give us the ability to do so, Lord. Strengthen us. May your spirit guide us. We thank you that we are shown the example through your servants. May we live up, live up to them in the kingdom of God. Amen. Do you want somebody to close the song, Don? I'm going to close with an old hymn, uh, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. I find it interesting that sometimes we think of only the down and out the hymn starts off with, uh, with those that are just struggling with life, those that are really having difficulty, grieving, or whatever it might be in that. Uh, so let's go forth uh, wherever we might be, whoever we might meet, to be able to share with them the love of Jesus and, uh, and the care uh, that the Lord wants us with our hands, with our feet, with our words to touch and to heal them. Let's sing together.
bless you and empower you as we go forth in his name. Thank you.